Welcome. My name is Georgine. This is your 15 minutes of obliques and stability. Grabbing a cushion for your knee, optional block and a late weight. Starting on the back, grabbing the block if you have between your legs, arms reach out wide. Start to lean your legs side to side as if you're coming into a twist, squeezing the block to help rise up. Really trying to keep your torso relatively still as the legs move side to side. Working on the side body engagement. And keep squeezing that block in, helping the deep core start to wake up a little bit more. Keeping the neck and jaw relaxed. And then after about eight, coming back to center. Tabletop the legs, move the block to the side, reach the hands up to the ceiling. Point the toes if you'd like. Right leg, left arm reach out and switching sides. Something called dead bug. I don't like the name, but if you ever want to look it up later. So this is some core engagement and you're expanding the limbs away from this engagement. Trying to keep your knees bent to 90 degrees as you alternate. The biggest thing I see is just kicking your bum, which is, I guess, movement for the knee, but not really the engagement we're going for. So you're really trying to test that stability through the abdominals. And if you start to feel any clicking or pinchiness, less range of motion or cushion under the bum. From here, hug your knees to chest and rolling like a ball a few times, and then slowly making your way to a seat. If you'd like a butterfly, that's nice to play with feet together, knees wide, and just chill out over your legs. Cool. All right, from here, coming to all fours, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, and moving through your cat cow. So exhale to round your spine and inhale to arc. It's up to you if you ever want to cushion your knees throughout. I won't be cueing that as much. Just know if your knee needs support, that's what the cushion is there for. And then from your all fours, right leg extends back, left arm forwards. So again, if you'd like the cushion, yeah, you can always play with that. So right leg back, left leg, left arm forwards, and then lift the limbs up straight up and tap down. Now noticing my torso is not moving here, it's just the limbs. So the challenge here is not only the arm and leg being lifted, because that's strengthening, but it's the transverse abdominus engaging, so that transverses across the belly. I'm finding that nice length, keeping it lifted and little tiny pulses at the top. And keep lengthening through the torso, trying not to move through the low back and belly as you pulse. And then from here, spin your right toes to the right, palm faces down, cactus your arm and pull your right knee to armpit. And trying to keep the shin and forearm quite lifted as you find this movement getting into that outer glute stability, getting into some upper back engagement, trying to keep the neck disengaged. And then after eight, finding a nice child's pose as a breather. So for this set, eight full range of motion, 16 pulses. That's what helps me Remember, so finding again that neutral spine, this time left leg back, right arm forwards, and eight full range of motion. So lift and tap, keeping the belly lifted. Finding your breath. And then lifting hold and 16 little tiny pulses. And no, you can always do more, you can always do less. And then flex your foot, spin the left toes out to the side, palm faces down, cactus the arm, pull your knee to armpit. Again, since we're doing the full range of motion, I'm offering eight here, a few more. Keep the shin and forearm lifted. And then when you're ready, child's pose, or if you prefer downward dog, they're pretty interchangeable throughout classes. And 
Alrighty. So finding a forward fold, roll your way up. And this is definitely where I forgot my weight. All right, so with your weight, holding it in your left hand, I feel a broadness to your chest. I like to just keep my right hand placed to the left shoulder just to feel that broadness, feel the belly hugging in, rooting into your right foot, and then side bend, side, and lifting up. I always just think trying to reach for my knee. Things I see the most here are the uh, right shoulder wanting to come forwards and kind of curling forwards, but try to think, stay nice and broad through the chest. And then staying at the bottom, just tiny little pulses, just thinking like patting a dog's head because I can't use any cat analogies because that would be a terrifyingly large cat. Keep rooting into the right foot. Okay, cool. And then from here, we're gonna come to kneeling. You can use your hands or not. I like to use the cushion. And then from here, stepping your right foot out. So same principles apply, just holding the weight at your chest this time, and then dipping and lifting your torso. So you can do this just from kneeling without reaching your right leg out. Uh, I just find it helps uh, weight distribution a little bit better. Some people like it more, some people like it less. That's really just personal. So again, starting with these nice dips and then hold belly hugs in, chest stays broad. And then you can move the weight around. I'm just doing the line here for the video, but sometimes I offer shapes. It just is basically to confuse the abdominals a little bit. You can always pause and hold, sometimes that's fun. And then back to full range of motion, because why not, right? It's a, an oblique class, so why not do more obliques? You can always change it up if you want it harder. You can reach the arms overhead the whole time as you dip and lift. You can change what weight you want. Some of my students like to use just a, a block or a ball instead. And then pausing at the bottom. Again, full range of motion. Sometimes it's nice to think about you're passing something to someone and they just don't understand that you want to give it to them and then hold and then coming up. Okay, give a little shake out, whatever you need. All right, we're gonna do that on the other side. So standing forward, fold as a transition, grab your weight, making your way up and second side. So now the weight's in the right hand, belly's engaged, rooting into your left foot as you dip to the side. This is also one I find I can sort of incorporate day to day without having to be sort of in a gym setting, but thinking about, okay, what movements are in my day to day that have this? Okay, then like patting the dog's face, yeah? Or searching for something in your massive purse, because sometimes this seems to be the best strategy. And then when you're ready, we're gonna do the candle dips. Option, cushion your knees, belly hugs in, stepping your left foot out this time. Broaden your chest, lengthen your neck, and then dip and lift. Again, so I'm showing with the weight at chest, but the arms can be overhead. And if the hips move a bit, that's okay. If you feel some, some pinchiness in the hips though, trying to squeeze either the belly or the glutes a little bit more, experiment with your, where your leg's positioned. And then hold belly hugs in, chest broad. Find that movement. Who are you, <laughs> who are you passing the weight to? Where did they go? And then hold at the top. No, I decided not to, that's okay. Back to full range of motion, dip and lift. And I always just get curious. I know some of you don't believe me when I say it's fun or interesting, but it's a practice and it it's kind of interesting if something's challenging. Why is it challenging? Like, do you do it throughout your day? like passing something. And then hold, lengthen, and no more of that. 
Give a little shake out to the hips, whatever kind of dance move feels good. Cool. Uh, so we're gonna do the rest of the stuff on the back. Do we need props? No. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything. So start nice and lifted, plant your feet in front of you and roll your way down. So we'll start with just good old sit-ups. So hands behind head, elbows wide, and lift your head and shoulder blades and lower down. So I know sometimes with the sit-ups, we think like lifting all the way up to the knees or like back in high school when your friend was sitting on your feet. But I want you to just to lift up to the point of engagement and then little tiny pulses at the top. The broadness through the collarbone, trying to keep the bum heavy in the mat and stay lifted, reach right hand to right foot and a little reach back in. So you're cinching like the ribs to hip on that side because again, I promised an oblique class. So hopefully you're feeling your obliques. Keep breathing, keep the neck as chill as you can. The little tiny pulse like can you reach your foot? And maybe depends on how long your arm is versus torso, how close your feet are. And then back to center, four full range of motion sit-ups. Try not to tug on the neck too much. Use the belly engagement to keep you lifted. And then next time you lift, hold. Left hand reaches to left foot and then a little side bend back to center. This is useful in the morning when somehow I've kicked all of the blankets to my feet and I have to Grab all of the blankets again, but I don't actually want to commit to getting up. And then little tiny pulses. If something's just out of your grasp and you think you might be able to reach a little bit more and then flop down, hug your knees to chest. Not done yet, but almost. Unless you're like, heck no, and you can just stay. Okay, so we're gonna play with that same dead bug, but now the legs are straight, so it's a bigger dead bug, I guess. So left arm, right leg right arm, left leg, reach away from each other. Now, if you feel clicking, pinchiness in the hips, anything that does not serve you, you can bend your knees to have a shorter lever. So that's why we started with that other variation earlier in class. Or you can have a cushion under your bum. I find sometimes that helps um, disengage through the back and hips because it helps the belly engage a bit more. But if it just feels tiring, um, that's just something you have to deal with. I like to go a little bit slower. That way momentum definitely doesn't kick in. So just working on that engagement. Okay, now grand finale, hands behind head, lift your head and shoulders, lower your legs down to 45 and slowly lift up. If you wanna go more or less cool, you do what you want. I just don't want you to feel your low back lift. I want you to feel the belly hug in, keeping that neutral-ish spine. Cause obviously the head's lifted, so. And then for the next one, this is where it gets really fun. You're just gonna hold. And then option like click your heels or do like a leg shape. And then when you're ready, flop down. <sighs> Windshield wipe out your legs. I feel like, what does that mean? Just plant your feet mat distance wide and drop your knees from one side to the other. Okay, let's come to a bridge pose. I like the robot arms because it helps broaden the chest and lift your bum, mid back, upper back off the mat. Just find that nice extension from shoulders to knees. And then start to extend your limbs out, give any little shakeouts, fidgets you need in the body. And then find that place of stillness. Nice long breaths, any big sighs you need out the mouth, letting it all go. And when you're ready, extend your arms overhead, big stretch, and then slowly rolling up, reaching for your feet, coming into a seated forward fold. 
Come into the cross-legged position. Connect your hands and thank yourself for taking this time for you. Awesome work and see you next time.